It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Monster Monday presented by DraftKings, America's number one rated sports book app. Although we are actually recording this Sunday evening right before Sunday night football because Brian is on the first flight tomorrow morning back home from Cleveland where he was there for that awesome Browns-Steelers game. We will get into that in a little bit. It's a new week. It's a new year. Happy to be on board again. I think that this is year 11 for me doing podcasts. I guess we're still in the same season, but whatever. It's a long time I've been doing podcasts. I love it. I'm glad you guys enjoy it as well. Nothing changes. We are still five days a week throughout the month of January through the Super Bowl. You still got the Fantasy Feast, Even Money podcast, as well as the College Draft and the Business of Sports. They are all weekly. We'll have a Spread the Word winner this week. We'll have a sponsor confirmation email winner this week. I will give a YouTube shout-out winner to someone that is a new subscriber to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, that goes ahead and comments on one of our videos. Patron shout out today, Scott Sarka, Sarsa, I'm not sure, S-A-R-C-A, patreon.com slash RT Media. Thank you for your contribution, Scott. We love all of you guys. So, by the way, as I mentioned, I'll say it again. You'll hear my Eagles-Washington breakdown on a Power Rankings Tuesday, but the Eagles are sitting a lot of guys. I would be shocked if they beat Washington football team tonight. Looks like the Washington football team will be winning the division, but we'll see. That game is still to be played. We'll talk about that on a Power Rankings Tuesday. Right now, though, it's Big Show time. The Big Show. Good evening, Ross. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year to you. Although, we, yeah, we kind of did a show on Friday the 1st, but we recorded on Thursday the 31st. So, yes, Brian, nice to see you. Happy New Year. You are in a different hotel room. It looks similar, but I know it's in a different city. It is in a different city, and I am excited to get home for the first time in a week tomorrow. But uh, for tonight, let's talk about Week 17. In the books, except for that Washington-Philadelphia game, what were your biggest thoughts from all the other games? Yeah, well, the first thing I'll just say, um, it was my worst weekend of Even Money podcast picks ever, ever, which means it's a good time to listen this week because I will have a bounce back for the playoffs, but real, real bad. It it was unbelievable. It just seemed like everything that could have gone the other way went the other way. That's why we always tell you it's hard. Uh, Some of the things that jump out to me, Bri, a lot of COVID issues. I mean, really, this today was about COVID issues and playing time decisions. I don't know that there was a game, hardly. You know, Tampa Bay and Atlanta, no Devin White, no Shaq Barrett for Tampa Bay. You get these other games where Cleveland-Pittsburgh, Hayden and Ebron on the COVID list for the Steelers, no T.J. Watt or Cam Hayward or Ben Roethlisberger for the Browns. You get to Buffalo-Miami. Where And by the way, that was one of my takeaways, Brian. What a no-show by the Miami Dolphins. Win and you're in. And you get annihilated by the Bills, who pull almost all of their guys at halftime. Certainly Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. Really, really disappointing and poor performance by the Miami Dolphins. You know, they didn't have Fitzpatrick, though to come in and maybe save the day, Fitzpatrick had was put on the COVID list. Flip side is, what is the deal with the Dolphins' defense? I mean, all that credit we gave the Dolphins' defense all year to be that bad? Really? Really, Dolphins? So, but you go right down the line. I mean, I'm watching the Rams and the Cardinals, and it's Chris Treveller against John Wolford. I I mean... Everybody's making decisions on playing time. The Chiefs sitting a bunch of their guys. The Packers playing their guys. I mean, that's really what jumped out to me 
my big themes were the playing time decisions, the COVID issues, the Dolphins no-show, some of the records that were broken. You know, Derrick Henry getting over 2,000 yards was a big theme of the day. Justin Jefferson setting the all-time record for yards by a rookie in a season was a big theme of the day. And some awesome, awesome playoff matchups. Like, are you kidding me? Colts, Bills, awesome. Ravens, Titans, epic. Another round three of the Steelers and Browns after they just played. I mean, the AFC playoffs are going to be lit. Now, you're old, Bri. You're not young, cool, and hip like me. Like, you don't even know what lit means. But the AFC playoffs are going to be lit, Bri. You know what that means? Yes, I have teenagers. Yeah, it's going to be lit, bro. For real. For real. FR, FR. Like if I was texting you right now, I would say, or tweeting, I'd say FR, FR. Like for real, for real. I got to write that one down. Hang on. Yep. FR, FR. You don't even know. You don't even speak lingo like I do. So, uh, and then the NFC, look, I'm not as excited about the Bears matchup, but, uh, or the NFC East champ against the Bucks. So NFC East, not quite as exciting. Rams, Seahawks, probably the best one over there on that side of the ledger. Um, speaking of things that you need to know for the new year, peace of mind. Peace of mind. You can't put a price on peace of mind or your family's home security. That's why I am a Simply Safe guy. I am a home security guy. Simply Safe has high quality equipment. The key to me is the camera footage. Look, I've kind of told you guys different ways of saying this. I had an incident in my house. The camera footage was critical, absolutely critical in the case, in the hearing. And yes, there was one. So there you go. And you guys get a free home security camera. When you purchase a Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash Tucker, get a camera at your house, please. You also get a 60-day risk-free trial, so there's nothing to lose. Visit simplysafe.com slash Tucker for your free security camera today. That is simplysafe.com slash Tucker. Tuck Stakes. Well, let's get to each of these games, and we will start with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They clinched the fifth seed in the NFC after a 44-27 win against the Atlanta Falcons. You know, I, I give the Falcons a lot of credit. They're one of the best 4-12 and 12 teams I've ever seen. And, and we'll, it'll be reflected in the final power rankings tomorrow. But they had the Bucs. I mean, it was 30-27. to 27. I mean, they, they had the Bucs being nervous because we know the Bucs want that five seed to play the NFC East champ, which will likely be Washington, but you never know as we're recording this 7.57 on Sunday evening so I can get done right when the Eagles game starts, right after the uh, late games there. So there was no Devin White and Shaq Barrett. I mentioned that. That clearly affected the Bucks defense. No edge rusher, no Devin White doing his deal, running and hitting people. But Brady, Brady's unbelievable. I mean, he's playing really, really well. Chris Godwin had a big day. The big news out of this is, is the Mike Evans injury. Mike Evans appeared to hyperextend his knee on a drop touchdown pass. So that's kind of the thing that, that – that's the big thing coming out of this game. Matt Ryan did some good things. Russell Gage had a big day, blah, blah, blah. But the Bucs took care of business. The Bucs are a machine right now. And really, this is why they have Antonio Brown. Even without Mike Evans, Antonio Brown comes in and does some great things, which is huge. Tuck Stakes. The New York Giants did what they needed to do, uh, but now they got to wait for the result of this Washington Philly game to see if they win the NFC East. Giants beat the Cowboys 23 19. Kellen Moore will be back for the Cowboys on a three year extension. I don't know what happened there. Troy Aikman said during the game that he heard that Boise State offered Kellen Moore the job and Kellen Moore accepted. So I, I don't know what the deal is there. I do know that the Cowboys did not come to play in the first half. I mean, 
The Giants got an easy touchdown on a Sterling Shepard re- reverse. Who, Sterling Shepard had a good game. Cowboys only get a field goal after Wayne Gallman fumbles. That's it. Andy Dalton was horrendous in the first half. Horrendous. He was a little bit better, a little bit in the second half, but still not good enough. Uh, Daniel Jones did some good things. Would have been even better if it wasn't for Evan Ingram dropping balls. Leonard Williams was incredible all game for the Giants. Man, give Dave Gettleman some credit on that one. He knows a good football player when he sees one. Mike McCarthy, I mean, whether it's not challenging the Pettis touchdown, not going for two, that was not a good way to finish the season if you're Mike McCarthy for the Cowboys. Tuck Stakes. Cam Newton, three touchdown passes. He also caught one. Patriots over the Jets in a game that has no playoff implications, 28-14. No, but Belichick hates the Jets, and he's always happy to beat them. You know, the Jets were up 14-7, and then the Patriots just pulled away. Sam Darnold had thrown a great touchdown pass to Herndon, but Cam had that long touchdown, I mean, long run that led to a touchdown. Then he caught the pass from Jacoby Myers. Cool story. Jacoby Myers is going to flag football team. Still a little bit confused by that one. J.C. Jackson had another interception, which led to the uh, Asiasi touchdown from Cam. Sony Michelle had a good game. Winovich had a good game. And the Jets probably finished their season the way they should. Tuck Stakes. Kirk Cousins threw for 405 yards and three touchdowns. And the Vikings, 37-35 win over the Lions. So I mentioned Justin Jefferson setting the rookie record already. Stafford had a really good game. Marvin Jones had a huge day. Cousins was incredible, including that late touchdown to Chad Beebe. But the the uh, the Lions got unbelievably raw deal on the officiating. Unbelievably raw deal. Now I had you know the Vikings minus six on even money podcast, so I wasn't minding it. But, I mean, it was terrible. It was honestly, they had one of the worst roughing the passer penalties I've ever seen. Like a total, total disgrace. Uh, Then they had a bad overturn on a Marvin Jones catch. I mean, it was really, really bad. Really bad. And, if you know, I guess it probably ends up for the best for the Lions for the draft pick. But for those guys, that was a disgrace. Tuck Stakes. Congratulations to the Cleveland Browns in the playoffs for the first time since 2002, following a 24-22 win against the Steelers. Brian, that was a pretty awesome game you were at today. That was a lot of fun, yeah. And and really happy for all the Browns fans out there. Oh my gosh, yes. And there was actually some fans there. It was about 10,000. I don't know the exact number, but they were scattered about, uh, you know, it wasn't like they, they had the whole stadium open. So they had, you know, socially distanced, of course, in the upper deck all around and they were making some noise. And, uh, and there were a couple of them who were stumbling down the street <laughs> afterwards, which was, uh, quite amusing. Yeah, but you could feel it and you could see the joy and you got to experience something very cool. I got to experience something that we've experienced in every other year, except for this year with fans. Oh, right, right, right. I mean, fans have actually made an impact. Uh, You know, most of these games that we've been to this year, you may have had 5,000, 6,000. This, I think, was the first time we actually had fans that made a difference. Um, How was the food? Okay. Uh, Bag lunch with – I had a a turkey sandwich on a pretzel bun. I like that. I like the pretzel bun. Oh, I like pretzel bun. I like pretzel bun. I like pretzel bun. Did you serve your country and put spicy mustard on it? Heck no. No. No, that 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 will not happen. Uh, in the little bag, besides the turkey sandwich on a pretzel bun, I had a side of pasta salad, tortellini. Big fan of tortellini also. Uh, chips, fresh fruit, and a cookie. Uh, solid performance. Give them a B plus. Got it. Okay. Um, well, listen, uh, Chubb had a long touchdown run for the Browns. Easy first touchdown drive. It looked like the Browns were going to roll. Mason Rudolph threw a terrible interception. After another Browns touchdown drive, which led to another Browns touchdown on uh, Jarvis Landry jet sweep. So it was what, 20, 21 to six at that point? There was a couple of field goals for the Steelers, but then Rudolph came back, man. He threw a bomb 
to Chase Claypool, then Juju Smith-Schuster for a touchdown. They go for two. They don't get it. Um, I thought them using Dobbs as a little bit of a change-up was interesting. Baker Mayfield was gutsy, especially the running. The running by Baker I love. Getting a couple key first downs. That's why I like that dude. Tux takes. Team record 404 rushing yards for the Baltimore Ravens. They route the Bengals 38 to 3, and they are in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, they had 350 rushing yards, a minute 45 left in the third quarter. Score was 38 to 3. No more scoring in the game. That will be addressed on the Even Money podcast. Brandon Allen throws a hey, ho- horrific interception to Marcus Peters in the end zone when the only time the Bengals got down there. He throws one of the worst interceptions I've ever seen. T. Higgins got hurt for the Bengals, which hurt them. The Ravens are on a roll. That Ravens-Titans game is going to be awesome. Tux takes. Your Buffalo Bills clinched the number two spot in the AFC after a 30-point win over the Miami Dolphins, 56-26 the final. As you said earlier, Dolphins' season is over. Yeah, it is. Wow. I mean, I I like Brian Flores, but I I tweeted this, at Ross Tucker NFL. I even think I retweeted it from our account, at Ross Tucker Pod or Casey did or whatever. That was a total no-show by the Dolphins. I mean, Isaiah McKenzie had two receiving touchdowns and a punt return touchdown. Josh Allen's throwing a bomb. The John Browns 28 to 6 at halftime. And they sit the starters. Tua actually gets a touchdown. First drive, second half. Okay. Nope. Then Tua throws a pick. Six to Josh Norman. Throws a couple more picks. Even Matt Barkley got in on the scoring fun. What a disaster for the Dolphins. What what a just a bad way to leave a taste in their mouth. To end the season. Tux takes. Seattle Seahawks over the Niners 26 23. DK Metcalf, most receiving yards in a single season in Seahawks history. They could not score, though. They could not score until the end of the game. Russell Wilson finding Tyler Lockett, who had a big game. Um, then Jeff Wilson scored for the Niners, but then the. the 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 Seahawks were able to strip CJ Beathard. I mean, the score was like, I think the score of this game was 12 10 or something with like three minutes left. Somehow there was a crazy amount of scoring after that. But the Seahawks win. They already had the division. They get the number three seed. It doesn't make a difference. They're still the three seed. So um, at any rate, that's about all I have to say about that game. Kittle's a monster. Whatever running back the Niners put in there does well. Tux takes. The Rams are in. The Cardinals are out. L.A. wins 18-7 to over Arizona. Well, Kyler Murray started the game, but then he came out early, and then he tried to come in and save the day late, but it wasn't enough. The Strebler guy comes in. He, he pitches the ball to Ward. I don't even know who Ward is for a touchdown, and you're like, okay, Cardinals are in business. And the Rams even fumbled on the goal line. But then they held – there was a hold in the end zone for Arizona, so there was a safety. Then Strebler – end of the first half, it's 7-5. The uh, Rams are losing. Strebler, who's in for Kyler Murray, throws a terrible pick six. Troy Hill goes 84 yards. Then Kyler Murray comes in. They try to kick a field goal. It's blocked by – Jalen Ramsey. With that win, the Rams are in the playoffs. They're the sixth seed. And with the Cardinals lost, the Bears are in the playoffs with the seventh seed. What a world that the Bears could lose their last game and still get in the playoffs. Tux takes. The Indianapolis Colts beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 28-14. They are in the postseason as the number seven seed. Jags finished one and fifteen. They're worst in franchise history. They lost fifteen straight, and they almost were only going to have two wins, both against the Colts, because it was twenty to fourteen, and the Jags were moving with the ball in Indy territory. Unbelievable. 
you know, uh, Jonathan Taylor had a huge day. He ran all over them. And then really, when it was 20 to 14 and it was still dicey, Taylor had a little juke move. You can see it on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tech NFL. My little, my little juke here in my office. By the way, is this the ugliest shirt I've ever worn, probably on the show, or one of them? Yeah. Uh, what are you, Iowa Hawkeye tonight? Or it looks Bumble like it, doesn't it? No, well, I am a Bumble Missouri Tiger. Oh. I am a Missouri Tiger. I've got a buddy that is a professor, was a professor at Missouri. I think now he's at West Virginia, actually. Same color scheme. He must love yellow and black, although Missouri is more like a mustard yellow almost. I mean, it's it's pretty hideous. It yeah. really is. I mean, it's bad. It looks like uh, you're wearing a backpack right now. Oh, because of those black stripes? It looks like, yeah, you got the little straps over your shoulders. Yeah, I mean, it's a terrible shirt. I feel bad. He's probably watching the show. or he, I think he listens. It's, it's a very ugly shirt. I'm wearing it because I'm going to work out during the first half of the Eagles game, and I wear it to work out. So, uh, anyway, whatever. Uh, LaVisca Chenault had two touchdowns for the Jags. They're only two touchdowns. And, of course, the Colts go for too late so that they're up by two touchdowns and so that I lose my Jacksonville plus 14 bet or push. Tux takes. Derrick Henry became the eighth NFL player to rush for 2,000 yards in a single season. Titans win the AFC South for the first time since 2008. The final in this one, 41-38, thanks to the biggest kick of Sam Sloman's career, doink, as time expired. Unbelievable. I mean, Gaskowski's on the COVID list. Sloman comes in, doinks it off the right upright in so that they win, don't have to go to overtime. They win the division. When there was like 10 seconds left, Tannehill throws that bomb to A.J. Brown. I don't even know. I still don't know how that happened. Like, how did that happen where he threw that bomb to A.J. Brown? Derrick Henry over 2K, totally ran over the Texans. He always does. No quit, though, in Deshaun Watson and that Texans team. No quit whatsoever. Um, they just kept playing. Brandon Cooks had an awesome game. The Titans' defense is terrible. I mean, the Ravens are going to put 40 points up on the Titans. I'm telling you that right now. Tux takes. Las Vegas Raiders finished the season 32-31 winners over the Denver Broncos. Darren Waller, a new franchise leader for catches in a season. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a lot on this game. Waller did a uh, – Waller's a stud. Melvin Gordon ran hard, did some positive things. The Broncos, I thought they had this game after the Jerry Judy touchdown, but Derek Carr comes down, fourth down, he throws a touchdown pass, and then they go for two. John Gruden, rather than tie and, and go in overtime, John Gruden goes for two. Kudos to you, John Gruden, and they get it to Waller. For some reason, the Broncos went out there and they tried a field goal, a 63-yard field goal on nine seconds left. Second down, nine seconds left. Run an out route for 8 to 10 yards. Please run an out route for 8 to 10 yards. I, I don't understand what my guy Vic Fangio is doing there. At least the Raiders get to 8 and 8. Tux takes. Los Angeles Chargers over the Chiefs 38-21. Justin Herbert, the first rookie with 30-plus passing touchdowns in NFL history. Yeah, I had some faith in my boy Chad Henney and the Chiefs, and they did. I think they almost did their part. He threw a couple touchdown passes. Chiefs moved the ball decently. Their defense was just a total, utter no-show. Uh, Herbert did whatever he wanted the whole game, even without Keenan. I mean, there was no Joey Bosa, no Keenan Allen, uh, but the Chiefs still couldn't stop him, even without Keenan Allen. Even with Eckler getting a concussion and being out, they still – weren't able to stop them. So ultimately, um, you know, you get what you deserve. Chargers finish with four straight wins uh, for Anthony Lynn, who it still seems like he's going to be let go tomorrow. Tux takes. Green Bay Packers get the number one seed in the NFC following their 35-16 win over the Chicago Bears. Bears still get in, as you said, following the Cardinals' loss to the Rams. It happened Thursday afternoon, so we didn't get a chance to talk about it, but David Bakhtiari tore his ACL 
in practice. And you know what? Maybe that didn't affect them against the Bears today, but that could be significant moving forward for the Packers in the postseason. He's their best offensive lineman. He protects Aaron Rodgers' blind side. There's a big difference between him and uh, he and Billy Turner. It's bad, really bad. You know, the Bears, they hung for a while. It was 21-16. Trubisky was doing some good things. So was Montgomery. But then Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, they just kept playing. Rodgers was perfect in the first half, almost perfect to start the second half, except you've got um, MVS, Marcos Valdez-Scantling dropped an easy touchdown. It could score could have been even worse. Aaron Rodgers could have had even better numbers. But ultimately, the Bears just kind of settled for too many field goals. Should have gone for it more. Matt Nagy was too conservative. And the, um, you know, the Bears make the playoffs anyway. So the Bears back in to the playoffs. Speaking of that, speaking of the playoffs, you want to talk about playoffs. This weekend, there's no better place to get in on all of the action than with DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. If you haven't checked out the app yet, there's no better place or no better time to sign up and start cashing in. Maybe you don't want to do it till it's 2021 or till it's the playoffs. Here's the deal. DraftKings is giving you the chance to double your money. All it takes is for one touchdown to be scored during Saturday's football games. Think about that. There's going to be a football game scored. That's it. Once you opt in and place your bet, all you have to do is sit back and wait for a single touchdown. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ROSS when you sign up to have a shot at doubling your money if a touchdown is scored in one of Saturday's football games. That's code ROSS for new players to get a shot at doubling their money. Limited time, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older. New Jersey PA only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Tux Takes. The New Orleans Saints easily win against the Carolina Panthers 33-7. to They wind up the number two seed and will face the Bears next weekend. Right, and they got to be pretty happy about that. I mean, there's a big difference in my mind between being the two seed or the three seed. The Bears are not beating the New Orleans Saints. That's not happening. Saints running backs were all on the COVID list after Kamara tested positive. They still won a game 33-7. to not a great look for the running back position, by the way. That you're, they're all, oh, just put Ty Montgomery, who plays receiver now, moving back to running back, we'll still win 33-7. to seven. Not a great look for the running back position at all. Um, but the really story of this game to me, honestly, Bri, Teddy Bridgewater, he threw a couple of horrific interceptions in the end zone. They benched him for P.J. Walker. And it's just a real bad look. They're going to have a new GM in Carolina. I think they're going to have a new quarterback. They shouldn't have committed to him for two years. I guess he'll be the backup next year if they can't trade him. But they're going to have to get a new quarterback in Carolina one way or the other because Teddy Bridgewater played extremely poorly coming down the stretch for the Carolina Panthers. That'll do it, by the way. Cannot wait to do the final power rankings tomorrow. Cannot wait to dive into these playoff games and all the offseason stuff and coaches and GMs and firings and hirings with Andrew Brandt on Wednesday's Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Thursday, we'll break down all six playoff games with Greg Cosell. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's NFL postseason. Shout-outs, Pizza Boy Brewing, Sport of Culture, SteakhouseSports.com, Vision Comics with an X. College Draft will be tomorrow on a Tuesday, Power Rankings Tuesday as well, even Money Tuesday. We'll get three of them for you on Tuesday. We'll be back to Fantasy Feast. Only one Fantasy Feast moving forward because there's only six games to break down for DFS purposes. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.